Hi everyone! So today I'm going to be showing you how I edit my Instagram photos. I'm sure you could tell by the title. So if you want to see this video, just keep on watching. So first things first, I'm just going to apologize because I sound super nasally because I'm sick. So ignore that. My nose is really stuffy and I'm just like not feeling too hot. But I'm going to show you how I edit my photos. It's very simple. Um, I'm sure you will see soon. Um, like my background, it's Harry Styles and he's in a bed of flowers and I can't handle it. So um, first I'm just going to start by importing um, a few photos into Visco. I always edit my photos in Visco Cam and I just think it's the best. So I'm going to choose some photos that I had pre-picked um, to edit for you guys and you can kind of just see what I do from start to finish. So I'm just going to go in order. So this first photo is just a photo I took of Carrie. Um, it's her hand um, holding a bouquet of flowers. Um, so always, 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 always use A6. I never use any other filter but A6. And this specific photo looks a little bit um, overexposed in my opinion, so I want to take the exposure down um, just one notch. And then I'm going to, um, the, the whites are very washed out, so I like to turn up the highlights so it's not so bright white. Um, and then sometimes I like to mess with the temperature a little bit if I think it needs to be warmer or cooler, but I like this one specifically the way it is. Um, shadows, I don't need to edit because I like how the shadows are very like contrasted. And sometimes I just sharpen it by one. But this photo I'm not going to do that too because I think it looks kind of too sharp when I add any sharpness. The contrast can go to zero. I might actually take this exposure down one more. And then take the shadows up one just so it's a little less dark. And um, I actually like this better. So I'm going to save this to my camera roll. And I always save it in the actual size. And for that photo, this is done. I don't need to add anything else, um, and I, I think that's good enough for this photo. Some other photos I might use Facetune or Lightroom to edit the lighting a little bit, or just certain things, but for this photo, that's all I'm going to do. Um, and then I'm going to use this next photo, which I took at the Oculus, the World Trade Center. I actually posted this, like, very recently. Um, so A6, like I said, always. And then... <laughs> The exposure, I'm going to take up a little bit because I want it to be really white, specifically for this photo at least. Um, I'm going to take the clarity up to just one, just so it's a little bit more contrasted looking. For this photo, I'm not going to mess with the highlights because I like how white it is, um, but I might take the sharpness up just one, just to kind of like highlight how the building looks and make it more crisp looking. I'm not going to actually edit anything else in this um, photo because I kind of like how it turned out just with those few little edits. Most of the time I try to take photos so that I don't have to do a ton of editing to them because it's just not always fun. And then I will save to camera roll actual size. And this next photo is just a photo of a street and it's like very, it's a gorgeous photo but it's very saturated and my theme, I don't even have a theme but my like, I don't like how brightly saturated it is. So I always kind of do the full 12 um, for A6, like the full filter, um, but this one I'm going to take the exposure up a little bit and then the highlights to 6, and then the sharpness up 1, and then I think I'm going to do the warmth up 1 and the saturation down 1. I actually think I'm going to take the exposure back down, the highlights can stay at 6, and maybe the shadows up 1. I kind of just mess around with, with each photo as well, I don't really have like a specific system, I just kind of can tell when I think a photo is like ready and what I like. And for sake of this video, I'm going to actually pop this photo into Facetune um, and show you kind of how I use Facetune. So um, my favorite tools on Facetune are whiten and details and sometimes tones I use. So for the details, I like to like um, detail the brick on a lot of buildings sometimes because I think it just like looks really pretty. And you can kind of see the difference between before and after. And then I'm going to do a little bit on the building next to it, just like on all the buildings. I just want to kind of detail these buildings just so they pop out a little bit more because they're obviously gorgeous. And then maybe a little bit on the street too because it's all cobblestone which is really cool. And for this photo that's all I'm going to do and then I will save the camera roll and that photo is done. 
And then this is a photo, this is kind of how I edit the photos of like me, because I sometimes do it a little differently. So A6, like always, and this one is super, super overexposed, especially my face, so I'm just going to take it down one, and then take the highlights up a few notches. Um, and then I'm going to take the temperature up one and the saturation down one. Actually, no, I'm going to leave the saturation. Um, and then I'm going to save this just in here. I'm going to do some other editing in Lightroom. So let's open this up in Lightroom. Go to camera roll, this photo. Oh. Edit. And then I will go to the whites and take it down a little bit and blacks and take it down a little bit. Saturation down just a smidge, vibrance down just a smidge. And then I'm going to go to color slash black and white and I'm going to go to luminance. Take the orange down a little bit, take the blue up a little bit. And then saturation, take the blue down a little bit. And I kind of like it to look a little more green, so I'm going to take the hue and take the blue down just a little tiny, tiny bit. And um, I'm not going to do anything else with the rest of the photo, I don't think. Okay. And then I'm going to save that, maximum available, and open this on Facetune. So once I go into Facetune, I will go into the tones, and something that always bothers me is like when my boots look like blue. So um, I just pick a dark spot on my boot, and then I kind of just like lightly go over it, so it doesn't look like I did like a ton, but it kind of makes a huge difference. Then I'll do the same to the other shoe. They just get like really reflective, so I like that. Um, and then I'm going to also tone my lips. I know this sounds weird, but when I do like a filter, it kind of like messes with the color of my lips. So I'm just going to kind of go over them a little bit. And then I always go over with the eraser just kind of like lightly. So it like only barely makes a difference. And then save that. And I don't think I'm going to do anything else this photo. Oh, lied. I'm going to take the details and go over the ice cream. I know that sounds funny, but like you can't really see it because it's really washed out. So it just kind of like highlights that. And then I'm going to save that. Save to camera roll. And then that photo is done. And then the last photo is this photo, which is a photo that doesn't necessarily look good just on its own, in my opinion. This photo, when I first took it, I was like, how am I going to make this look right? But with a little bit of editing, you know, can be a photo that you really like. So full on A6 all the time. Take the exposure up to, and then I'm going to go to the temperature, and it's too blue for me, so I'm going to take the temperature up to highlights, um, just up to, saturation down to, and then I'm going to do clarify one and sharpness one, and then this photo for some reason is like a little bit crooked in my opinion, so I'm just going to straighten it. And then contrast up uh, one. And then I'm going to save this and I'm going to go into Facetune again. And I'm going to use the whitening tool for the snow at the top because it's kind of blue tinted and it's like going to drive me nuts. So as you can see, it just like makes it just like a more pure white color. And then that's it. So that is it. That is how I edit my Instagram photos. As you can see, I have a lot of like apps in this folder. I can tell you exactly what I use all of these for. Um, but I mostly use Visco and then followed by Lightroom and then probably followed by Facetune. So um, I have the Visco app. I have um, Snapseed, which is actually really great for like if you need specific parts of a photo edited. So you can use their selective tool or their brush tool if you have Snapseed to kind of just like uh, brighten or contrast or I think saturate just like a specific part of the photo which has really really come in handy for me because there's sometimes just like things that are throwing off the whole photo and it'll recognize if you use a selective tool it'll recognize like 
certain parts of the picture that are the same. So like if you click in the sky and you want it to be like less saturated, just tap in the sky and it'll like, you can kind of adjust the size, but it'll like only highlight parts of the sky. So it can kind of distinguish different parts from one another in your photo. So it's not going to just kind of, you don't have to select it yourself, it kind of automatically does it. I really like that app. And then obviously there's Boomerang, which I've only used like once or twice. There's Facetune, there's UNUM, which is kind of how I lay out my Instagram. I don't really do this a ton. Obviously I have literally no photos in here that are ready to be laid out. Um, and then I go to this next side and then I have photo editor and I use that basically just to flip a photo because sometimes when you take like a picture it like makes it backwards so I kind of like to flip it back. And then font candy I use to add text to images for my mom's story like do all of her social media. And then Afterlight, which I use sometimes for borders or like, I don't really edit with Afterlight. I used to only use Afterlight and then I discovered Visco. And then there's Lightroom. That's kind of it for the photo editing tools and stuff, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful. If you learned anything from this video, just remember, always choose A6. I don't know what it is, but it just makes every photo look awesome. I know there's no real pattern to what I do other than just using the same filter every time, but I hope this was helpful nonetheless kind of just have to look at a photo and kind of figure out what it needs and mess around with the editing options and you'll kind of figure it out and it's become like one of those things where like my friends will literally send me a photo and be like hey can you edit this and I'll send it back in like 25 seconds because I'm just like very used to like doing it really quickly now so it just kind of takes practice and like you'll see obviously with time but A6, A6 is where it's at because it is the best. If you don't follow me on Instagram I will link it below along with all my other socials, my Twitter, my Snapchat, my Spotify etc. So check out my Instagram to see all of these pictures kind of in action and how they kind of turn out on a feed. And yeah, I will see you guys next time. Hope you enjoyed it. Bye!